mobile hunters, are you looking to make the move to saddle hunting this year? Or maybe you just want to add a few new pieces of gear or upgrade your current saddle gear. If that's the case, then head over to tetherednation.com where they've got all mobile hunters covered. Whether you're new to saddle hunting or an old timer, Tethered is your one-stop saddle shop. From saddles to ropes, sticks, ascenders, whatever it is you need, they have you covered. I've personally been using their gear for the past three seasons. Now, my base setup consists of the Phantom Saddle and the Predator Platform. And if you're wondering why I've chosen to use their gear above all else, here's the cliff notes. They're innovative and pushing the mobile hunting forward overall. They cut no corners and prioritize the safety and performance of their gear. They care about the community that they've created, and their gear allows me to hunt free. And above all else, I like to support good people doing good work. If you're interested in upping your mobile hunting game, then head to tetherednation.com. This podcast is brought to you by Skull Brew Coffee Company. Skull Brew Coffee roasts premium single origin coffee guaranteed to deliver the freshest coffee directly to your doorstep. The kicker, they're 2% for conservation certified and donate 10% of their proceeds back to organizations who support the interests of our hunting community. So go to SkullBrewCoffee.com and pick up one of their three killer roasts and fuel your hunt and fill more tags with Skull Brew Coffee. Welcome to the Truths from the Stand Deer Hunting Podcast brought to you by Skull Brew Coffee Company. I'm your host, Clint Campbell, and you're listening to episode number 228. Today I'm joined by my good buddy, Greg Litzinger, for part one of our scouting discussion. We are covering everything from access to tree setups, so stay tuned. What is up? Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you are feeling fine. Happy freaking Cinco de Mayo. I hope you have a margarita and a taco in hand. If not, hit pause. And it doesn't have to be a margarita. Just go get some tequila if you're of age. Let me put out that disclaimer first. And then get yourself a taco and then hit unpause and strap in for a cool podcast with with Greg Litzinger. Um, truth be told, not much of an update here on the outdoor front for me, man. I've been swamped with work and haven't I haven't even truthfully got out to even turkey hunt this year. Um, I know it's pr- pretty, pretty crappy. Not going to lie. I had a bunch of stuff to do all last weekend. Uh, it was the opener last weekend here in PA. And uh, I did not get a chance to go out. So I'm hoping to make amends and get out this uh, coming weekend, uh, head back to the family farm and visit with my my father-in-law and my good buddy Tate, um, uh, who should be back there as well, and do a little turkey hunting with them. So that's kind of the plan for uh, for this upcoming week. But I'm not going to uh, belabor this up front. We're just going to kind of jump to it. Have my buddy on, Greg Litzinger. You guys know him. You love him. Backed by popular demand. Uh, it was, I think the weekend of my birthday, he and I were supposed to hang out and I kind of forgot. And we ended up touching base that week and I was planning to go scout on, you know, a Saturday anyway. And he, um, he's like, well, yeah, I'll just kind of come along. And so that's what ended up happening. We ended up meeting up and just kind of scouting for the day. And it was an area that I'd hunted previously, but just never got to this particular area of this piece. And, uh, we found some really good stuff and it's always fun to kind of spend a day in the woods with Greg. I always kind of pick something up, especially whenever you're looking for beds. Cause I never find beds a little bit of a funny story in the podcast about me not finding beds, but, be, but maybe I'm standing in one as I'm, as I'm making that statement to Greg. Um, you know, we found a lot of cool sign on this, on this scout, you know, we found some good primary scrapes, a uh, couple of them. And, uh, we actually found some big tracks, uh, which that were, that were fresh ish in one of the, you know, in one of the scrapes or actually in two of the scrapes. So, um, clearly those are still being used looking branches, right? So that's kind of exciting. Some, you know, I guess maybe central of, or hub of communication for deer in that area, which is always kind of always a party, um, to find. And you know, what we kind of cover today, at least in this session, this is going to be part one of a two part of a two parter because Greg and I talked for, I think a little over two hours, um, and this first part is really kind of us breaking down that scout, talking about what we found, two way rub lines, buck beds that we found, primary scrapes that we found, you know, access routes, you know, potential tree setups and stuff like that. And then I'll release part number two, which is really kind of more talking about, you know, um, Greg's big wood scouting session. Cause Greg's gotten into some really good stuff and his, on his home turf. Um, that's just kind of, you know, I think even f- took him by surprise a little bit. And so that'll actually be part number two. So we'll cover Part number one today, my scout with him and just kind of go over what we saw and and kind of further break down our day. But as always, before we jump into it, I want to thank you all for listening. All right, folks, 
We are back with another episode of the Truth From The Stand Deer Hunting Podcast. And today I have, uh, you know him, you love him, the bow hunting fiend, Greg Litzinger, hailing from the Garden State, weighing in at 175 pounds, 5'10", maybe? On a good day, maybe 5'10". Well, half, you're getting yeah. old, dude, so yeah, you're shrinking. I'm shrinking a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Compressing of the spine. Yeah, exactly. I know. It's, uh, I actually, as we're recording this, I actually have a birthday tomorrow. Yeah. You know, another another year lapping around the sun. You yeah. Know. Feels good, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it feels great, man. Yeah. You know, can't wait to do another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but Greg and I, uh, we always try to spend a day or a couple of days together in the, in the, I guess, winter slash spring. It's like a little later than usual this year. Usually yeah. we, we get together in February or March, but. I just blame, just blame the Rona. Don't blame the Rona for everything, man. Yeah. No, it was actually, it was really more so the weather this year, man, with like the late snow and stuff. Cause usually not, you and I usually do get together sometime in February. It's usually sometime right after like Harrisburg. Cause yeah. we'll see each other there. We'll make yeah. plans while we're there and then we'll hit a scout or two together. But then we just got pounded with snow, which kind of screwed up a lot of. Well, for scout. you guys, I didn't have to really worry about that. No, you actually, you didn't get much snow at all. I remember mm. whenever you, you texted me the one yeah. day you were out in the big woods scouting, yeah. and I'm like, how are you scouting, man? Like, we got, like, three feet of snow here. And there's, like, I got a dusting. Yeah, you got, like, bare ground. Yeah. I was pretty jealous. But uh, so Greg and I got together today for our annual kind of uh, scouting trip, hang out, you know, do some BS and go look for some, go look for some deer. Some sheds. <laughs> for some shit. Yeah, beds over sheds. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, but there was a, a piece of property that I hadn't, uh, that I had been hunting and had a really good deer on. And I had, you know, I think I mentioned it in the upfront of a podcast a few weeks ago, or I hypothesized that this deer might've, when he transitioned, a hypotenuse. I hypotenused, yeah, <laughs> uh, that he might've transitioned to this other kind of area and this, this clear cut that I had, uh, had just hadn't had a chance to get to, to scout. And so it was funny cause I texted you this week and I was like, I was looking on my calendar Knowing that my yeah. birthday was coming up and was kind of like, let me make sure it's like, do I have any appointments? Is there anything I need to do? Or can I really go scout? Yeah. That's what I was really trying to figure out. It's like, or is it's there your like, birthday? Yeah. Or did I already book something or, you know, with it? And I looked and it said, hang with Greg yeah. is what it said. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, oh, are we supposed to hang? And I thought maybe I put it in there and like forgot to see if you were free or whatever. And so I text Greg. I'm like, hey, are we hanging out this weekend? And he's like, yes, we are. Yes. And I was like, sweet. So then I told the wife, I was like, hey, put the birthday stuff on hold. Oh, yes. I'm hanging out with Greg. <laughs> yeah. You know, it must be terrible, man, being her because I leave for her birthday every year and hang out with Chad for her birthday. Yeah. Um, and right. I think Chad's birthday is actually the same as hers, oh. which is weird. So I spend, I celebrate his birthday with him yeah. versus with my, with my wife, which is kind of odd we should just stop talking about that yeah we'll just delete that <laughs> rewind yeah rewind <laughs> but anyway uh greg and i got together and did some scouting on this piece um i always love going to scout with you man it's like i always picks up pick up something new you know looking at looking at different stuff what i realized today is i walk by more beds than i realize yes because I agreed you agree <laughs> <laughs> agree yeah it's like, cause I think, you know, and this might be a good place to start. I think a lot of people look for really obvious beds, like yes. where it's like worn to the ground, you know, where it's like, you couldn't, pe- couldn't walk by it if you wanted to. Yeah. Well, you, that's what you see. It's posted on social media and pictures and you, you talked about on podcasts, but like the beds we were finding were dead beds. Majority mm-hmm. found a nice buck bed, in a, a peculiar place. Really you know. weird place. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that one yeah. because that one was kind of. Well, let's just start from the beginning of the scout, yeah. right? So I, when we got to the spot, you know, I had mentioned to Greg, and I think I mentioned it on the podcast before, I had found this new primary scrape area, which my camera got stolen from, which sucks. We can talk about that later. But yeah. that, I'm still grieving. Still grieving yeah. that one. It's only been there for two weeks, yeah. right? It's like, and it's not even in season yeah. when it got stolen. It's like, it's a kick in the nads, you know? Um, and there was a really big track and of yes. course there's no bone on that guy's head, right. but there was a hammer track and yes. I just would like to see the body of that deer. But anyway, that primary scrape was there and, you know, I kind of gave Greg the lowdown and, and was like, Hey, this, you know, cuts over here that I want to check out. And so we started kind of walking in it and we weren't in it very long and we came across, you know, a pretty good rub. Yes. Right. And, you know, Greg, you know, let's talk a little bit about the two way rub, right? Yeah. Like the, cause you could, you immediately were like. Oh, he's coming and going from yeah. this direction. Yeah. You know, bucks and, are leaving and 
entering and exiting this little clear cut that was thick, but not super thick. You know, 10 yards away, it was just a wall of awfulness, but mm. you were just in that little bit of cover, a little buffer zone, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Uh, headed down in the browse. You know, it's a good good spot for an ambush. Yeah. You know, you catch deer coming and going. Good place for a camera. Yeah. You know, it's a good good intel. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably throw a sit at it just, you know, it, it's too good not to, and it's relatively easy access, you know. Yeah, and it's not far off that primary scrape, yeah. right? And I think you're right, tossing a camera in there and even just getting a time stamp yeah. on when stuff's coming through because then you can tell, like, all right, you know, do I need to— you know con- they're going to be going low in the evening and going high in the morning. Right. 90% of the time. Right. You know. And this was kind of the beginning. Well, this certainly was the beginning of our scout, but because it was the beginning, it was the beginning. Yes, it's like so it, it is the beginning. It is because it was yeah. the beginning. Yes, <laughs> deep cuts. Yeah, by Greg Litzinger. <laughs> but uh, what was interesting is like as we kind of kept going, like all the good stuff we found was all along this same elevation line you know of course we didn't know that walking into it it just kind of we started following the sign and following like where the train was going to lead us you know and we started just kind of running into you know i think that was the last spot we found some additional like doe beds along that elevation line and when we first found beds we didn't really we found those first rubs yes and then we found some beds and at first we were kind of like Maybe these are maybe yeah. this is a buck bed because yeah. I think we found two close yeah. together and we were like mm-hmm. they might have been shifting. Yeah. You know what I mean for wind or sun or whatever. Piles of hair. Yeah, so they're being used frequently, right? Um, but as we kept going, we found more and more, and it became feeling more like, eh, yeah, this is probably doe bedding. Yes, you know because we weren't finding any other rubs anywhere or no. anything like that that would say like the classic and, and rub get, in a bed. Yeah, let's get back to you were literally standing in a bed saying. I can never find beds. And I was literally as you standing, were standing in a bed. Yeah, I was literally standing in a bed going, dude, I can ever find beds. And you're like, um, you're standing yeah. in one. <laughs> Which is pretty like par for the course yeah. for me. It's like unless it's like unless it is a super obvious bed, I often miss them. But yeah. it was helpful for me today because I think a lot of the other scouting we had done together. We just, we didn't find a lot of beds no. in some of the other scouting no. sessions that we've done together and, and stuff. And like I said, and doe bedding is weird because they they bed in the same general area, but mm-hmm. usually not in the same specific bed. Like a buck's very specific. I'm gonna bed right, right here <laughs> on right. this wind, right here. The does be like, ah, I'm just gonna just take a nap over here. We've all seen it. We run cameras. You're like, you're just bedding down right there. Well, we okay. were literally looking at some cameras today, or like yep. a camera that I pulled that I still had out today, mm-hmm. and there was a doe they just yeah, laid random down bedded. <laughs> yeah it was like i didn't I'm tired of walking i'm just I'm kind of tired i'm gonna just lay down take a nap yeah so um but it was interesting because whenever i was in the poconos you know there was no mistaking like the doe beds because they were just everywhere yeah. like you couldn't you couldn't miss yeah. it you know these were a little bit more nuanced you yeah. know and they weren't in because we're also in areas that have a lot of rock yes you know what i mean so it wasn't like a landscape of you know, what I'll say is just tree debris, you know, being covering mm-hmm. the ground with leaves and whatever. And you could see the depressions yeah. real cleanly where they were spending time. Yeah. It might be on the edge of like this huge rock down in like yeah. this small little crevice. Yeah. And that might be where they're, where they're laying. So it just a little, a little bit different, yeah. you know? Um, I think the big find though was as we walked this out and it wasn't on the map, I couldn't see it. We ended up running into a two track that obviously was being used at some point to log all that stuff. And it wasn't visible on the map. And it was, we were coming out of that doe bed. Yes. Yeah. The first two beds we found. Right. And we spent a little time in there kind of trying to figure out or trying to uncover if, is there, are there bucks spending time in here? And we really only found those two scrapes or two rubs, if I'm remembering right. Mm -hmm. At that, at that entry and exit point to that. Yeah. That's right at that little tip of that draw where it kind of just fed into that clear cut. Yeah. And once we got out there, like I was behind Greg as I was kind of meandering through and I just hear, Whoa, scrape. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know? And, and, and so I come walking out and just talk about that, yeah. that scrape setup, man. Cause that's yeah. probably, probably the thing that I was, well, one of the two things I was most excited about what we found today. Yeah, That scrape was tall. I mean, that licking branch was well used and, it was I mean, stout too. It was yeah, thick. Yeah, you know? it's 
but at the, just the height alone, you know, it was eyeball height for me. Mm-hmm. So you figure five ten and a quarter. Mm-hmm. I was wearing boots, so maybe yeah. five ten and a half. Right. Yep. <laughs> you know, we're we're not counting for shrinking. Yeah. Here, you know. <laughs> but I, I mean, I always I like finding rub or scrapes like that. Big, well used licking branch, but just real high off the ground. Mm-hmm. That's just going to eliminate. A lot of does, you know, a lot of yearlings and stuff. You know, they can right. stand on the hind legs, but usually that's not there, you know. But right. just something that that's all, something that big and tall is just something with, you know, a good, right, you know, standing height, you know. Yeah. To get to it and pull it down, munch on it and do whatever they do with it. Right. So. He's obviously got to get up on his back legs a yeah. little bit to hit it. But depending on how big his rack is, yeah. he could maybe stand there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. stretch a little yep. bit and depending on how tall his tines are and hit yep. it a little bit. Now he's not gonna throw preorbital gland yep. on it. He'll have to get up on his hind legs to do but that. I, but I always like them, you know. You find them a lot, you know, on those gas lines and, and whatnot, you know, two mm-hmm. tracks, mm-hmm. you know, cat tracks, whatever you're calling you know, power lines. Not so much because they're too wide. Yeah. You know, so Narrow gas. Well, because this still feels really covered. Yes, that was the thing. Like you know, people always say, and anyone out there listening, I'm sure you've come across a, like a logging road that looks like the size you could drive your truck down, yeah. and you'll find some scrapes along it, yeah. you know, occasionally. But you know, unless you're in an area that probably doesn't have a ton of pressure, you're probably finding like smaller scrapes yeah. that are probably spread out. Right. When you get into some areas where it's been logged, you know, however many years ago, and it was really just a skitter trail, yes. it was never really like. They weren't driving trucks up yep. into it or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was just big enough to get the logs out, yep. you know? Basically. And really, you'd maybe, if you drove a four-wheeler through there, yeah. you would, it would be tight. Yes. Put it that way, right? And it's basically clear-cut on both sides. Yep. So it's really just like a small little path opening. Basically that, a hiking trail. <laughs> basically a hiking trail, A yeah. wide hiking trail. Yeah, that's exactly, that's a perfect way to put it. But those trails coming out of those doe beds... Yep. We're just kind of dumping yep. right to the, because there was a couple that kind of fed yep. into there mm-hmm. and they're all just dumping that scrape. And those two scrapes, I mean, there were, there were two yep. underneath that. There may have been more than they all just kind yep. of merged potentially. I, I don't know, but like way it looked today when we were was, there. And that road, whatever you want to call it, that, that track was just littered with deer tracks. Oh yeah. You know, cr- coming and going. And we saw a good track there yeah. too. And a, and a really solid track. Yeah. Fresh. We probably bumped them out. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. And the size of those scrapes were probably, I'm trying to think of like a good example was like probably, um, four by four. I would say four by four. Yeah. I I would say the one was probably three by three. Yeah. You know, the one was definitely probably four by four. It was probably like the half size of like a decent size car hood. Yeah. And you know what I mean? That old signpost rub that was right, you know, five yards away that got hit once this year, but yeah, it wasn't like they worked it over, but you could see where in the he, years passed. someone touched it up, but that yeah. thing was beat yeah. like, you know, and that, that was the one thing basically killed the tree. <laughs> yeah. Totally killed the tree. And so, you know, that would have been the icing on the cake Yeah, is if we found, if that signpost rub was still active, like yeah. extremely active, that would have been like, but even that to, to just know something actually hit it once big enough to leave a tine mark, you know, right. You know, chest high that's you know yeah because it was up on a mound of dirt the where it was at and he was on the downhill side whenever he hit it so yeah it's a a, that's a big deer even if there's only one he's coming through there once and sometimes that's all you need right and so once we had seen that i then started thinking my hypothesis was potentially (laughs) correct of like that deer had migrated and made his way over and then Greg and I were actually sitting here looking at the map, just looking at like, well, what's the distance between mm-hmm. where I had pictures of him? There were the two places I had pictures of him and where we were picking up sign today, because, you know, let's face it, you know, there probably aren't a lot of deer that big, you know, and yes. then the track we saw today yes. and that other primary scrape, mm-hmm. like that was a big track. Yes. Right. And that deer's still around, obviously. Yes. Well, that's two big tracks we found today. It, Could have been and, the same deer potentially, yep. you know, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, there's a chance it's that deer I had on camera because yeah. that was that's a big deer. That's yeah. a big deer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and there's not going to be a lot of deer around of that just, caliber. Yeah, in this even general body area. wise, you know, that was just a, to make the depression he made because the ground wasn't that soft. Yeah, to make you know, and it's a walking track, so it's not a running track. Right, and there was dew claw. Yeah. There was blade. You know, yeah, had some weight. Yeah, so it's girthy. The, and girthy. Yeah, you know, Litzinger likes girth. You know, for those <laughs> out there listening. It's, 
<laughs> so, uh, Sorry, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> so th- I started to kind of think that my hypothesis might be coming true to where it's like, okay, not a lot of deer in this area that's going to lay down a track like that. Yeah. Not a lot of deer in this area that's going to be able to make, you know, a mark on a tree that high necessarily, right? Big primary scrape, primary scrape down low, yeah. right? In a bunch of doe yes. bedding. Probably a lot of nighttime activity, yes. but can great spot to get inventory. Yes. Probably would never really be able to hunt it. You maybe get lucky yeah, during you rut. Would, you check the camera regularly and you'd be not blow it out. Who cares? You know, they're still going to use it anyway. They're going to totally use yeah. it. Yeah. Cause it's right off a hiking trail, right yeah. off a parking lot. Yeah. So, but that's the, uh, or is it right off the parking lot? Or is it oh. <laughs> girthy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I started kind of getting excited cause I'm like, okay, cool. Like this is, the puzzle pieces are starting to come together. And at this point now, I felt like there's probably two really good setups. And let's talk about the setup actually in this spot, because we actually, we ended up scouting out further and we'll kind of finish out the scout because we found some additional yeah. stuff that were puzzle pieces that yes. kind of continue to lead us to believe that hypothesis might be correct. But on our way back, we kind of followed a different terrain line, you know, or a topo line back. But as Topo typically does it funnels you into right a spot back to exactly where we were, <laughs> which is near, you know, not a, a uh, surprise yeah. why deer are using that particular those particular areas because yeah, the terrain is pushing. I was there. I was leading. I didn't have my phone out all day. Yeah, I was just following the deer deer, deer sign in the terrain. Yep, and we and ended up right literally where. right back to the same exact. Terrain. Yeah, I literally <laughs> said when we started walking back, we're like, well, let's walk this back, yeah. you know. And I, and I was like, I bet you the topo is going to funnel us right back to where we were. And there was a rock that was there that was yeah marker under, yeah it had a marker from like you know uh, surveying whoever yeah. knows how long ago I yeah. mean it's ancient but we saw that and then on our way back we I'm saw like, it again I'm like hey look there's that rock again <laughs> <laughs> you know so the ter- the topography certainly funneled us there which is it's kind of funny right but and you don't it, even see it on the map too which is weird you look at it you can kind of see it on the top of the map but you don't really see it on the top of the map it's just Right. You just have to walk at you know, the old boots on the ground. Right. And then figure it out. Because yeah. on the map, it's like, yeah, you can kind of see where it might funnel you. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you're like, that's really not really looking like that big of a funnel, but it does funnel you. Right? Yeah. It, when it's that, it's a combination between the topography and the and the habitat. Yeah. Like how it gets thick in spots and like forces you to move. And it's funny and we're laughing about it, but the reality is, is like, that's the same reason why the deer sign was yeah. where it was. Right. And so... You know, that's a lesson for people out there that, like, if you're hunting or scouting in really thick areas. We were, like, like, 400 yards away when we cut back down into that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was no reason why we should have landed there. (laughs) You know what I mean? Other than that's how the terrain, you know, and topography is going to make us move to get around. I won't say paths of least resistance because we're willing to walk through stuff because we're scouting. But you can't walk through a wall. Yeah. Right. And so the deer are going to do the same thing. Right. So Especially in those, you know, it's not open. Mm-hmm. You know, they feel relatively safe and that's right. And this isn't a young clear cut necessarily no. either. You get into pockets where you yeah. get some really good browse, yeah. but you certainly hit pockets where there's a dead zone. Yes. But they're going to pass through to connect the, the dots from yeah. place to place. So anyway, back to that big scrape and licking branch we found. Let's talk about the setup a little bit, because when we came back through, we stopped through there again, just and looked at it again. And now this time we were really kind of thinking about setup. Yes. We knew a little bit more about access now because we had walked some yep. things out that we could, okay, we can get in here. We can get in here. Right. And started kind of looking at it through that lens. So talk a little bit about the setups that we talked about there. Yeah. There's it's just a clear cuts, not giving you many trees to hunt. That's for sure. Right. It's yeah. little trees and the big trees that were actually huntable would be a great stand location are right over top of the scrape, which is just awful. Yeah. You awful know? for a high angle shot. Yeah. So, we picked out a few trees. You could thread a thread a needle through, basically, but it's going to be it won't be easy, but it's yeah. doable. Yeah, you know, and you know, there's just they're only up what seven, eight feet, maybe mm-hmm. ten foot. Yeah, you know, and that's all you as high as you need to be. You yeah. know, keep your shot angles low, covers good, yeah. and it's a be high impact. Hunt. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're in it, you're you're thirty yards from that one doe bedding, forty yards, you know, sneaking there in the morning. Yep, so. Action could be, <laughs> could be bonkers. You yeah. could be, yeah. I mean, that's one of those areas where, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be up close and personal yes. with them. Like if, if things go down and there's yeah. activity, like you're going to be. And those deer, I mean, 
that's a spot you don't expect humans to be. You yeah, know? we didn't see jack co- squat for humans. <laughs> yeah, what we did see was hiking yes. related in certain areas. We could tell where they had come through and yeah. did some, um, not manicuring, but moving of some things. And yes. there was some flagging tape, but it wasn't. Yeah. We walk the flagging tape, and this, again, is another yeah. tip for people out there listening. It's like, and I've said this in the past in podcasts, if you live in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you can't let flagging tape deter you from going in and scouting and hunting areas. Yes. Otherwise, you won't hunt anywhere Yeah, because it's all over the place. You know what I mean? So, yep. so, but what you can and should do is, like, figure out where that flagging tape's going, right? Yeah, could be your access. Could be your access, Or your right? exit. Yeah. You know, it's like use other people's work for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you have to hunt their setups or whatever. And you, who knows how old that stuff is. Yeah. But when we started walking this, the way they were doing like cutbacks and yeah. stuff like that, it was clear it wasn't someone hunting because yeah. a hunter is not going to circle back around and make these loops. Yeah, and go around a giant rock the long way. And <laughs> right, and there was a log that was cut with a chainsaw, yeah. right? Like a hunter's not going right. to do that, right? Yeah, hold on, so, pull up my chainsaw real fast. <laughs> right, and it just left it there. Yeah. So it wasn't even like it made it any stuff to step over it, right? But what we kind of deduced was like it was probably mountain bikers, you know, yep. making a trail, you know, to, to run through the, to run through the timber. Yep. Um, and so once we realized that we were like, look, there's no, there's no human, yes. there's no people back here hunting. You know, there's not, we did find one stand out near a prop, a private property line yep. that was a little ways down, but there is zero people hunting this particular area. Yeah. And you that's know. why those bucks are most likely there. That's if you run a yeah. camera this year and catch that buck and that shift, that's why shifting over to that spot. Yeah, because the spot that I was hunting him, I didn't get a lot of people on camera, but um, it, it certainly is e- more easily accessed. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the map right now. It's, yeah. it's definitely, it's more huntable. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, here it's like you're going to have this access trail here that runs up yeah. into it. And then you can basically just slip down into any one of these, yeah. you know what I mean? And this down here, sorry, and, you guys listening can't see the map, but this is pretty easy walking. For the most part, you know, there's not a lot and of that wind. Um, going to be coming out of the southwest usually. And yeah, anything south based, the deer's going to be smelling any type of pressure. People, hikers, they're just going to want to just oh yeah, and get ton- get out of you know get out of dodge yeah yeah, and tons of people hike this too yeah, you and know especially I mean? in the fall, it's big hiking fall sleeve change yeah, that's just drama they don't need yeah exactly and so you know there's there's that you know. Um, that balance, right? Because I know you and I even talked about it today when we were walking along where it's there's certain areas where that hiking traffic doesn't may not bother them, that they just kind of get used to it, right? And you can oftentimes like you'll find sign yeah. right along hiking trails, or they'll use the hiking yeah. trails and you can hunt right off the hiking trails, you know, because they're not bothered by it. And then there's some places where they they are bothered by yeah. it, you know. Um what so, I've kind of found in this area, it's like I do feel like they're bothered by it because they dry it up right around the yeah. time that a lot of that activity started. Yeah, you know, the leaves, the leaves, you know, and I think a lot of people, you know, I don't think I've ever really talked to you about this, but the leaf change and the mm-hmm. amount of people that are in the woods that aren't hunters. Yeah, you know, so you got oaks dropping, and then you have a lot more people hiking. Yeah, you know, mid September you start to get that leaf. You know, some of the early trees are changing color. People going mm-hmm. out walking their dogs. Yeah. Dogs that are a big no no for deer. You're like, nope. Peace out, you know, and more people. And then you got hunters on top of that. Yeah. So they're just going to go into a place where they say they don't have any of that or it's minimum at best. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's, and that particular trail is a ton of dog yeah. walking on that one. Cause it's, it's a big access road. Yeah. You know, it's like you could drive a truck through it. Yeah. There you know, you go. And it's a, it's a game lands yeah. kind of access. And summertime road ticks are bad. People aren't really hiking that much, you know? No. So you get that couple cold fronts, a couple cold snaps and September ticks start drying up a little bit. Yeah. So, so it, all, all the puzzle pieces started coming together at that point. It was like all those things coupled with like the sign we were finding coupled with, we're not finding any human sign. And the reason being is that quite honestly, it's not getting there. Oh, it's going to be a bitch to get and in. And it's out. not quite, it's not one of those spots where like, Hey, I can sneak right in there. There's no sneaking. In no, spot. this <laughs> it, you're going to, if you're going to, if I'm going to hunt that, you know, I'm going to have to be pretty strategic about picking the right day to go yeah. hunt it. For not for the wind, number one, for access to get in, but two, like I'm gonna need some cover. Like yeah. I'm gonna need either a light rain to help me with sound, or I'm gonna need for it to just have it have, have had stopped raining yeah. to like deaden my my walk in. Yeah, because the, the walk's pretty. I mean, over to the the hunt that scrape, 
that's a long walk. <laughs> oh yeah. In the dark too. That's a long, yeah. that's a long strategic walk. I should say. Yeah. Cause I'm just pulling up the map here to look at where we were, we were at. Cause we were all over in this section here, you know, we're just looking at where I would park. Right. And you got to kind of loop up around it's if we're going to come in. It's a mile and a half. of. Yeah. That's a good three quarters mile walking through the woods in the dark. Yeah. It's going to be, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be a, it's going to be a long walk. Um, <clears throat> but could be worth it. You know, I think for that spot there, I think that is a candidate to go in probably in like the next two months, I would say, you know, or end of May, maybe. Um, and hang a and actually hang a cell camera, yeah. because that's an area I'm probably not going to be willing to walk to unless I know I've got a real good chance yeah. of like something For passing sure. through. You know, not only that, but I also think because you are going to be so close quarters, and the access is tough, you're going to have one or two hunts. Now the yeah. good news is, is there's like three, maybe four spots yes. you can hunt in this general area, right? That scrape would be like, I know that deer are now hitting it. I've got the right conditions to access it. I've got the right wind to hunt it. I'm now going to yep. go hunt it. And it might be the only hunt I get in that spot all the whole need. year. Might be all you need. Yeah. Cause you're going to be, you're going to be all up in the business and on that one. They said that that's that prime example. If you're using your full 20, you're in the wrong spot. That's right. You know, cause 50 yards behind you, it's open mature hardwoods basically yep. you know it gets really open sparse and all of deer just funneling right down into that point yeah and then so let's walk off of that scrape now right so now we kind of continue into the next side of like the clear cut and on the map it just looks like one big clear yep. cut but we know that there's a, a, a small road there now and <clears throat> we're walking now over to the other side of the of the, of the clear cut and we picked up another found some more beds and some just more, beds. more random Right. You know, bedding here and there at that right. same elevation line, basically. Right. And then there was, we did find like one of the cool things that we found when we were in there is a lone oak tree and in, a bunch of scrub oaks in this one little patch. Yeah. And that's a spot that will have th some caps or some oaks. I yeah. think dropped some oaks last year. Yeah. So that's a spot that'll need to be monitored just to kind of see because that would, like we were talking yeah. about, and that sea of like, crap yes <laughs> if that thing is dropping yes that's a magnet that is going to be like the johnny stewart would be proud johnny stewart would be proud yeah. <laughs> nice yes. <laughs> but that will be like the hottest restaurant in town yes and know, that's for... thick too and those scrub oaks they're eight ten foot tall some of the ones they're mm -hmm. prime they'll drop too right so yeah and so there's no, so when all this stuff starts coming together, it's like, okay, you get the primary scrape close to like where we enter, entered, right? Find that rub, two way rub line yep. where that buck was obviously going in and out of there. Obviously, he's not betting there, yep. or at least he, maybe he's betting somewhere in there during rut, yes. potentially, right? To intercept some does. But that goes into a ton of doe betting, yep. right? So we know that, okay, bucks are coming through here. Maybe they're cruising because there is another cart path that we found that kind of runs along the bottom of yep. this, of this cut which we found later, which is like, okay, hunting this yeah. might actually be a good play on some days. Maybe we're not getting the perfect access yeah. conditions because we found some pretty slick access to get into these to yeah. where you could potentially hunt, hunt that and hunt that bottom side of that, uh, that rub maybe, yes. you know? Um, but when we found those Oaks, we were like, all right, primary scrape, two way rub line, doe bedding, <clears throat> old, uh, signpost rub with hammer scrapes, yes. <laughs> right? With killer setups, yeah. like with awesome breakup to like, I don't even know. I'm going to, I'm going to map this real quick just cause I'm kind of curious to see how far the distance is between those Oaks and that scrape. It's literally a hundred yards. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're probably 150 from that, from that bed. bed. Yeah. Let me just, uh, I'll map that real quick too. And just to kind of look. So, and from that buck bed, to that oak is 130 yards, yeah. right? And then from that buck bed to that scrape is 240 yards, yeah. you know? So that's nothing for deer. Yeah. So not to get ahead of ourselves. So we found this, you know, this little oak like area that we were like, all right, let's mark this. Cause this, you know, if scrape is a heavy active, trail coming down into that too, from coming down through that. Right. And not only that, but then it's like, <clears throat> so that oak set up and hunt could be an early October hunt. Yeah versus waiting for those scrapes to open potentially because now I'm 
I'm getting in close to hunting a bed now yeah. at that point. You know what I mean? Cause that, I won't go as far as to say that bed was well used necessarily, but certainly used, used yeah. hair oh, in it. Had a rub right next to it. Rub right next to it. And a couple rubs around yeah. it too. So that buck is spending some time. So let's, we moved out of that little Oak area and started headed over, you know, kind of headed, I guess it's West. Yeah. Be bopping through just nothing into that boulder field. Yeah. And I you mean, even we, mentioned something. You're like, this boulder field is, you, cause I told you, I was like, deer will go through. They love this stuff. They yeah. go through it. And you're like, I would never think. I was like, you'll find some good buck sign in these things usually. And then we found a rub and it was like, Hey, is that a rub over there? Yeah. And yeah. it was pretty, from pretty far away, to, yeah. oh, far enough away. It was probably like 40 yards, yeah. you know, and we can just kind of see the change of the color yeah. of the tree. And you're like, is that a rub over there? And I'm looking, I'm like, that does look like a rub, but it was like the weirdest place for yeah. a rub to pop up. It was yeah. like this slanted tree. Yeah. Right. And yeah, the tree is about a 45 degree angle. Yeah. It was, it was weird. Um, and so we go to walk over and what do we find? A bed. Yeah. This deer was bedded on a rock. In two spots. Yeah. And and legit just betting on a rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not even making it up. Like, yeah. Like for real. Uh, just a giant boulder basically. And the rub was him coming off the bed, stepping down into a little pocket and making a rub. <laughs> yeah. And whenever he says this deer is bedded on a rub, it wasn't like the rock was like at ground level and he was on yeah. the rock. Yeah. The rock was, let's call it four foot up off the ground. Yeah. He was He was bedded on a boulder. Yes. You know, so it's not even a rock. It's a like, car hood boulder. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was literally the size of like a, a double bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like the size of the rock. Yeah. Right. And so we found that bed and it was just kind of really interesting because like, like Greg was saying, there's a lot of that stuff around me where I live. Um, and some of it certainly isn't, you know, I was telling you about the one area yeah. that I scouted that was just like the boulder rocks. fields. Yeah. It's too big. It was the size of my truck. Yeah. Like, you know, and you're jumping from rock yeah. to rock to rock. But this was one of those areas where, yeah, there are boulders but there's like paths of least yeah. resistance that deer can kind of move through and they'll have to step on some boulder yeah. to get across it here and there but they're still able to kind of like navigate like yeah. they normally normally yeah, would. I, I find that in north jersey a lot and boulder i won't call it feels just a, a place a lot of boulders mm -hmm. Deers just go through it like it's nothing you right. know most people looking at it like oh they can't, deer can't get through there right. it's not a hundred yard boulder field it's you know boulders and timbered areas Right. If trees are growing there, deer can get through, you know, basically. It's not right. boulder field where there's no trees. Yeah, deer ain't going through there. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, we saw one of those on the map, actually. Yeah. There's a, an area where it's just like, hey, that looks like that is just like a big pile of rocks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go ahead and stay away from that, you know. Snakes. <laughs> and, yeah, let's definitely stay away from that shit. Um, so we got to that bed, and the way this cut works is it's kind of, there was this cut, and it was connected to another cut that kind of started working working north but what we ended up finding was i don't even know why we started going down like we started going down was there another rub that was down there i think we found we've seen another one where, where as we're looking on another at angled that, tree yeah, you can tell it's the same tree. deer that made yeah, it. yeah yeah the, the same angled probably a rub coming into that bed and a rub leaving that bed and then as we're looking at that one rub i was i look over and it's like hey look another bed, right. another bed right uh, and and so then we made our way kind of down at that point. We we're kind of getting lower toward the to the bottom. Yeah, of this. you 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 went up. You're like this deer trail's going up, and yeah, I kind of was just looking for more rubs because I'm like, all right, there's a three rubs right there and two beds. Yeah, so I end up going down and into a cart road or what do you call it, a cart road? Just an old logging road. Same you know? thing as what we had. Yep. Uh, it, it actually connects to the yep. other place that we were at. And and yeah. right where I came down was a giant scrape, and I look uphill and tell Clint there was a scrape there. There's some rub, yeah, rub coming, right. you know, going right up into that bedding area. So. Right. So we came down and kind of investigated that, and that is the one that actually is probably, you know, if I'm going to hunt a scrape, you know, and I'll probably put yeah. a camera on that also um, just to kind of figure it out. And again, no human sign. Zero. We're not finding any. We haven't found any sign yet. Now, a little ways out from this scrape, we yeah, did find. Yeah, about 150 yards. Yeah. There we, was a hang on that somebody's gun hunting because, you know, it's a hang on. It's eight foot off the ground. Yeah. And highly, where, highly doubt they're bow hunting an eight foot ground. It's possible, right? But where that was, probably not possible, right? Just in, and, and just if you think about what they could see from that stand, like they would have, they'd be able to see pretty far, yes, you know. Uh, so certainly felt like a gun, a gun stand. And you know, when you find stuff like this, like you investigate it, yeah. how old are the straps? Yeah. You know, what I mean, is it grown into the tree? Like all those types of things. And what this told us was 
it hasn't been used. Yes. You know, is at least what it looked like. And so yeah, there's a dead branch or one of the things. Not unless the guy put the branch in there knowing if somebody went up on the stand. Right. Which is possible. But odd. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, something I would do. So something you would do when you're odd. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's like I'll leave booby traps and saying, like somebody's been in here. Somebody's right. been sleeping in my bed. Right. Yeah. Um so when we looked at that it really didn't give us any pause to say, no. you know, this person's, you know, going to bust stuff up. Not only that, but we both kind of felt it was probably the private landowner that owned the land right yeah. below there. Yeah. It was probably that person who was taking a, a, a Saturday stroll and yeah. crawling up into a stand, if any, if anything, you yeah. know, um, and where it was placed, like Greg said, it was the path of least resistance. Yes. It was low, low yeah. effort kind yeah. of area, <laughs> you know, which, you know, whatever. It's like good for him. Yeah. He probably Truth of the matter is, is, I'm probably not going to hunt much more than 150 yards from him. Yep. So, you know. That's all I need. And, and yeah. little pockets of timber like this, 150 yards, like a mile. Totally. It's enough thick. It was kind of open where the stand was, but where that scrape was and rub on that two track was, it's a lot thicker. Yeah. So a buck of any size knowledge, he's not going to expose himself unless he's following a lady, you know, unless he's right. love struck. Right. You know, but. I picture that spot a good mid October. Yeah. That buck sign, two buck beds on a boulder field with numerous rubs right. and a scrape. Odds are that's a good morning spot. You can slip in there and catch them coming back to bed. Right. And the access in that spot is dynamite. Yes. Like we found You cross on no deer trails that where you're hunting, you know. Yeah, exactly. You cross deer trails, but they're you're not gonna be hunting there, so who cares? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Because I'm expecting him. The only thing we'll want to learn from hanging a camera there is how's he getting to that scrape. Yeah. You know, I I don't think if it's a mature deer, I doubt he's walking that cart path. No, he's coming up. He's coming up from that bottom, probably from that private. Yeah. You know, to being and headed his way back up into bed. You know, well, that's that same, you know, scrape that where he had camera stolen. That's down low. Mm -hmm. So odd. Uh, you know, a lot of buck signs down low, mm -hmm. eating people's grasses, shrubs. Yep. You know, probably oaks down there. Yep. You know, so coming up high, you know, for the bed, typical mm -hmm. hill country, yep. you know, buck behavior. And if you think about it, man, like I'm just looking at the at the lines here. Like, eh, I guess it's not the top third. Eh, it might be the top third if you think about the top oaks. That's a 700, 800 index line. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, you're probably in that third-ish kind of range. Yeah. Thirdish, thirdish, you know. I mean, it's give or take, right? But I, I think mean, that he's just betting there for a simple fact: nobody goes there. Yeah, you know, because to get to him, you have to go through a boulder field. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say yeah. that, right? So it's that top third is a rule of thumb, but you also have to take into consideration like what what else are they and, using? Yeah, right? most access in this property is down low, so most betting is going to be high, just in general, anyway. If yeah. it was the other way around, all your access is high. Odds are the betting is going to be low even though it's not his benefit, but they just want to be away from people. <laughs> so right. they're not going to bet up high right. if everybody's coming from up high, you know? And if you look at this area that we're finding this, right? Like the interesting thing is, and looking at the map, you know, and I'll zoom out just a little bit so we can see it better. Like, what do we notice about this area, right? That you can't say about this area, right? It's, it's all in between where the easiest yes. access is, right? Like there's not, all these other areas on this on this particular piece have like some type of access road that it's running running yeah. through it. And I've been through like this side over here and it's 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 not great. Like I've hiked all through that. It's it's pretty it's pretty barren, I guess you should say yeah. I could say. Um which makes sense. Like it's like there's not a lot of ways to get into it. It's gnarly here. And even down on this private, like when you look at that has some pretty, you know, deer like a six foot world, yeah. right? Like they like stuff to be Head high, a lot of side cover, yep. stuff like that, right? When you when stuff starts to get up above their head, they start to feel yeah. vulnerable, right? And even down on that private, it's like it's still relatively thick. And we're in there now with just like just a little bit of green up. And I thought yeah. you made a good point today when you said what we see on the trees right now is probably pretty close to what you would see in the fall. Like early, early yep. fall, you yep. know, like early October or yep. whatever, where you still got some foliage, like yep. there's still some green around. You get an idea of what it's going to look like in the fall. Yeah. Which is another tip people could use. Yeah. You know, go out right now, you get an idea of what's 
Right. You if know, you go out really early in the in the winter, you know, or really early in the spring, you're going to get a real good look at like your November hunt. Yes. You know what I mean? If you go out about now yeah. when things start to pop a little bit, you're going to get a really good look at what it's going to look like in that October yeah. 1st through like 15th and you're, time I mean, frame. And, and when you're bed hunting in the morning, your entry is like super important for me. So mm-hmm. like that spot, the, the cart road there, that's a great spot because you got the, the boulder field and a little bit of greenery, like you could sneak in and it's, you know, I wouldn't say it's a slam dunk, but you're going to see bucks right coming through there. Yeah, you know. no doubt. And so, you can get out too in the morning because he, yeah. he, he might come in a different way. You can actually get down, you know, and and move on after nine o'clock. Yeah, because odds are he's not coming back to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> right. Yeah. If I don't see him, then yeah. he's not. You know, yeah. he's not there because he could still be in that bed, but you can sneak out and you know, come back for not, another day. Yeah, because like from that, let's just zoom in here real quick. So I'm curious to see here how far. That scrape is from his bed. It's not far. It's going to be like 80 yards. Yeah, here, let's look. It's a uh, scrape is there. His bed is right there. 60 yards. Yep. And that's, for me, that's prime. You yeah. Know? Even in the evening, you could sneak in that close on a, like I said, windy, you know, day you got a little bit of cover. Well, especially down that car path. Yeah. I mean, that was, that's the gold. That's kind of the gold find, yeah. right? Is, <laughs> was that, you know. That's but, quiet walking. Yeah, I mean, and it's the you know, it's a, the the big portion of that that feeds into that hiking trail. Yeah, so your sense pointless. Yeah, I mean because you're people, used to it. Yeah, I mean we saw people walking yeah. down today <laughs> as we were walking yeah. up, right? Because we walked through, we found that bed. Yeah. We were like, hey, you know, and this is another important thing is like whenever you're out scouting, it's like don't just scout for where the deer are. It's like yeah. start thinking about your access yeah. then because you're there. You know what I mean? So that was the other most thing. people. I'll come back. Odds are you're not coming back. Yeah, odds are you're coming back. I say that shit all the time, <laughs> yeah. and I don't make it back. You know, yeah. I got like four spots. I was telling you, like, I always say I'm going to come back. I'm like, yeah, I'll come back in the dark at three o'clock in the morning. I got to go out extra early because I don't know where I'm going. And yeah, exactly. Dude. Get lost, get hung up, or set the stand the wrong way. And you're like, what am I? Like, yeah, I'm not even. You know, and then like, or you get in your canoe like you didn't do circles yeah, around the lake yeah, the one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was pre. That was pre. Uh, Onyx and self, you know, smartphones. Right, that is a great story. It's yeah. like he just Thanks. spun around in circles. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw that one out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, like the point being is that when you're already there, like there's no time like the present, yeah. right, to figure that stuff out. And so that's exactly what we did. Like we found this sign, we hit this this cart path. And and it's, it's good too when you have a. Buddies to bounce ideas off. Yeah, totally. Because we yeah. stopped, we stopped there. We started talking about like, okay, when would we hunt this? You know, or when would I I hunt this? What would the access look yeah. like? You know, and we started kind of playing those things out. Well, this is what our prevailing wind is going to be, and that was the first thing we talked yeah. about when we walked into this piece. We yeah, like, I asked you. I was like, "What's your normal wind here?" Yep. I was like, "Typically, we're getting a southwest, right?" And so then that helped us think about, all right, when we're in these areas, when we get to them, we can already start thinking about setups because yeah. we know. What the thermals are going to do, we know what the prevailing is probably going well, to that, be. That one bed you, we we looked at, the the second the last bed, buck bed we found was actually facing mm-hmm. towards that scrape. Yeah, because that's how he's coming into that bed. Yep. Yeah, you because know, you're like he's facing this way. I was like, it's it's where he's coming in. He's watching and, his back trail. Yep. Yep. And so th- that's you know another thing to look for. You yep. know when you're when you're setting up and and all those other things like take all these variables into. Uh, well, yeah, because especially like so, sixty yards, it's pretty close. Yeah, right. It's like I'm just gonna be honest. I'm probably not. You're comfortable, not one stick in that. Not one stick in that at all. No, that's that's a four six no eight. <laughs> right. Super yeah. Quiet. yeah. Well, it'll be two. It'll be two sticks because I don't think in that area I need to get that high. No. I think in this area in general, I'm probably gonna hunt a like max probably ten feet off yeah. the ground is probably at best the height. I'm probably gonna be closer to eight yeah. would be my guess. Um. But, you know, it's important to kind of think about all these things because, for example, there's two beds. The bed I have marked on the map is the first one we yeah. found with the, with the rub in it, yes. right? There's a bed that's closer, right? Yes. So he could legitimately be bedded 30 yards yes. from that scrape, you know? And I'm going to be honest, like for me, that's way too close for comfort. You know what I mean? Like I'm just For an not... evening sit, there's, that's throw a morning sit in that. But if he's looking at that scrape, you know he's coming up through that scrape to that bed yes so that's like boom morning spot yeah easy spot. great access he's coming in there if right. he's watching that the, the other bed was looking the other way you know right. so he's probably coming up through like that you know 
big uh, that first scrape we found come right. up through that way. Oh, so you like got angling yeah, through. So yeah, yeah, so you got two bucks bedded probably in that same area could be problem. two bucks could be the same buck and it, yep. or it could be two bucks using both beds yep you know what i mean it's like and it's just interesting because you know we had we talked a lot like because so today we probably didn't cover as much ground as we had in past scouts that we've done yep. together but i feel like we probably understood this one a lot better a lot better than some of the other ones we had because we actually stopped spent time looking at what we were the sign we were seeing well because you we also you said you just want to check this one cut out. It wasn't like, hey, let's check this 900 acres out. And you're like, oh, well, we got like, that's a lot of walking, you know, and it's right. like, it's hard to slow things down. Well, and like, I already had an idea of like yeah. what deer were around, you know what I mean? I already had an idea that that one so primary planning, scrape. planning works. Planning totally works. Yeah, imagine that. But going back to what we were saying, you know, it's important when you're in the environment to think about you know, what you're going to have as your variables potentially during hunting season and start to kind of play it out in your mind. So it's not the first time you're encountering it when you're hunting. I'm not saying you need to spend an hour there drawing diagrams, but just a quick, like what five minute conversation. diagram. Yeah. Yeah. You can draw a couple of those, I guess, yeah. you know, the deer's going to bed here. This deer's going to bed here to relapse <laughs> here. That's where the primary script should be. And then here's me and I'm going to bed. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you no, know, it's like we started talking about that stuff as far as like where would your where would the setup be? What tree would be best to get into? Could I hunt this on anything other than a southwest? Like what wind is going to be in his favor the most that he's going to feel most comfortable in? When would he bed here? Right? Because even though we have a prevailing southwest, he may use it on a northeast. Like yeah, that, you know that knows? bed looking, you know that was towards the scrape. That, right, that's the northeast. Yeah, you know coming over his back for yep. sure. Yeah, he's going to exactly. come in, smell that bed coming in. And then boom, and watch his back trail. And yeah, he's going to smell. He's going to hit that. He's literally going to hit this scrape. And that southwest might be the other one because it's coming up this way. So he might be coming in this way, the, the, the first bed. Coming, the in, coming in from this way, yep. right, and catching that southwest yep. or coming in from this way potentially. Yep. I would say maybe this way because it's just this is where all that other sign Just was. so you know, we're, we're pointing at a map. Sorry, you guys can't. But yeah. just there's a map, top of the lines, and there's fingers getting pointed everywhere. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of, there's a lot of karate chopping yeah. going on right <laughs> yeah. now. Um, but yeah, he could totally like that would totally make sense yeah. coming in from like anywhere from yeah. this way on like a southwest like right, that, that bed. coming through that scrape and then coming into that first bed. He's yeah. smelling all that. Yeah. And, and it totally makes sense coming this way. It's like that's totally a northeast yeah. wind to hit that to catch that bed that he's looking back at the scrape. And that's actually a good spot for morning sit because you're gonna if you're coming in that way from set, from down set here. Up, yeah, it's it's super dangerous, but that's that's how you're gonna that's that's it's gonna, gonna kill big deer. Yeah. You know, pushing that line like, man, this might not work, but well, yeah. Cause I'll have to set off of him. Like, yeah. so where that scrape is like, I, I wouldn't set up there obviously yeah. cause his bed's right there. Yeah. I would probably set off, yeah. set up Get 30 yards, 30 yards off of that. And it's, I mean, that's that, and this might blow up my face, but also it's like this, just well, hunt that he, off you're wind. Giving, you're giving him the wind a hundred percent there almost. And that's you know what, what he mean? wants. Yeah. You know, hunt the wind that's for him and not for you. And then that's maybe when, depending on what time of the year it is, it's like you probably don't get real aggressive, but maybe just a little tending grunt once in a while that says, hey, someone else is in yeah. your territory to talk, to try to get him up out of that bed to come come yeah. check. I would probably still want to set up to where I would have maybe a 30-yard shot to that scrape. You know what I mean? If I could, if I could get it. What's that? Sissy. Sissy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if I'm going to set up 30 yards off that bed, you know what I mean? I'll put me out here. It's yeah. like, you know, and look, I'm trying to remember that setup. I don't know that I could even set up down this way to the to the west and still get a shot at that scrape. I feel like it's still, like, too grown enough to where it's like, I don't think, I think that cart path kind of bends a little yeah. bit that I think I would Right need. on that bend on that cart path, you probably make it work. Yeah, because it's almost like a little point that yeah. I could probably see out around it, and, yeah. you know, or at least if he's coming to it or from it, I could yeah. probably have a small window, probably not to the scrape, yeah. but like. Yeah, as soon as he gets past it. Yeah, but I'm super stoked about that setup because yeah. I think that's probably the one. You can learn a lot from that setup. You yeah. can probably get, you know, three or four sits all season long yeah. in that setup and probably get a good idea how those bucks are using that. Yeah. Because there's no sign where you're walking in. All the sign is in that. And you can see if not, you get high enough, mm -hmm. you know, as the season progresses, get a little higher and you can glass and, and get a good yep. idea what's happening. The other thing too, in the morning, it's like, if he's bedded up here, you're screwed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you do have that Northwest or that Southwest yep. here, right. Or, you know, if, if you got a Northeast, you're actually pretty good because yeah. he for that second bed, yeah. right? Because he's watching that his back. Even that first, he might be coming up in, you know, to the other bed as well. You know, yeah. who knows? Yeah. I mean, that, that spot, it's going to be an interesting hunt there. It's going to be a tight hunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to be, it. yeah, it's going to be 
make or break pretty yeah. much every set, you know? Um, that's exciting. But that's what's cool about yeah. it, man. You know, it's if you win there, man, you did it right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's and I think we were talking as we were walking out, you know, you were just mentioning you're like, I think you're gonna you'll have a chance to kill a good buck in here. Yeah. Just based on the sign we had seen, the tracks we had found, right? Suggest there right. is a big deer that's alive in here somewhere. And the access to some of those spots are not they're easily doable. Yeah. You know? There's not there's not any of like the 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 scrape that we found with the crazy licking yeah. ribs, that's the one that has the toughest access. Yes. And even that's just walking in the dark, you know, it's just taking your time. Yeah. And that's one where I do need to go back. I mean, we looked at it and yeah. figured out what the best access yeah. would be, but that's one that I will need to go back. You got to dry run that one. Totally got to dry <laughs> run that one. And now the dry run will be is I'll, I'll run that one. I go to hang a camera yeah. in there, you know, um, cell camera. So I'll probably only run it once, you know, but I'll, I'll track it. I don't like to put stuff up, but I'll probably yeah. put a few markers up somewhere just to kind of keep me on course. Cause this is a place where you can get turned around pretty easily, you know, just with how, how thick it is. Yeah. And like, some of the bouldery stuff you got to kind of get around, like you can get off your mark pretty quick, you know, in this, in this setup. Um, but yeah, man, I think this spot's going to be, this spot's going to be killer. And even just Intel cameras going to get, you're going to get great Intel. Oh and yeah. That, I mean, cause you're a mile and halfway, you got all them bucks, you know, guarantee some of them transition over to this. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause on the other piece, there was that big one that I had yeah. right on the other side of this piece. The big one, there was uh, another one that was just like a nice, a nice up and comer yeah. buck. And then there was another one that I didn't show you a picture of this one, but he was like a freaky six point that looked like he was old. Like his bases were probably like yeah. that big Shoot around. That thing. Oh, I knew you would love him. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I told someone that this past weekend, who was a hang? Oh, I was with, uh, when I was scouting with my buddy, Aaron Hepler, when we were up in the Poconos, um, we were talking about, we found some sheds yeah. and they were both like smaller sixes. Yeah. And I just said something. I was like, dude, six points. Like Litzinger was kill those things yeah. all day. He was like, really? I was like, yeah, dude. I was like, he loves big sixes. Yeah. So I was big like, sixes are just mm. Mm. girth. Yeah. yeah. Girthy dude. <laughs> Girthy. <laughs> Sorry, so, babe. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we'll make a hard transition here. Cause I want to hear a little bit about, you know, and we can pivot back to this cause well, let's just go over to where I pulled the camera. Yeah. Right. Cause we went over there and we found some, some sign and some, you know, it, we won't say what water it is, but there's some, you know, there might be a cool a, access, with some it. cool access. Yeah. That, that, you know, I kind of showed Greg like a spot that I've been hunting, had a camera there. A couple deer showed up on, there was one decent deer on yeah. it from, you know, earlier in the year, but, um, he disappeared once his what, September rolled around. He was yeah. Going. Yeah. There was one other decent one that I had in there. He showed up like during, during rut. Um, it's close to food. So it's really probably an early, earlier part of the year, mm -hmm. earlier part of the season. Um, hunt for the most part, but the access was pretty slick yeah. in there. And we actually kind of identified a couple other potential setups. Cause this is the first year I'd ever hunted it. And when I was in there, it was a little, it was obviously greener. Yeah. And so some of those trees that we were picking out today, they weren't, yeah. as, they weren't as obvious yeah. like setups, you know, yeah. like, ah, uh -huh. yeah. So today you walk in, you're like, Oh shit, that tree, that tree, oh, yeah. you know, but talk about that. What did you, what did you like about that setup, man? That's just, you're not crossing any deer trails, mm -hmm. even, you know, where you were, you would launch or you said you would dock you know, essentially. Dock, yeah. yeah. And then walk down for me when I, my water access is I pretty much paddle right to the tree. Right. And then I get down there. So you, those spots you can hunt all the time. Right. Because you're not crossing your trails, you yeah. know, your, your, your scent streams minimal. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you know, like yep. for me. And then the the tree I picked was literally put the canoe up and you're, basically take three steps you're in a tree in a tree yeah. Yeah. and that that is key with water access especially yeah. a spot like that you might have to hunt two or three times to get it yeah. right you know yeah. because they're coming through there you know it's just yeah. a, it's a little small little funnel like but funnels don't always pay off like you have to put time into a funnel for a funnel to work and if you're yeah. blowing out that funnel like most people that might hunt it they're coming from the road well the jig is up right from there you know yeah <laughs> so it's like but the canoe boop, boop, you know in and out yep Cross exactly. no trails, leave no trace. Yeah, like a ninja, like a ninja. Yeah, I like that one tree that you pointed out because I was like, yeah, that would be a killer tree. And you got, and it's a big tree. I mean, mm -hmm. that camera and those deer were running all over place in there, oh, which yeah. is kind of hard because if you get in some of the other trees, like you're you're leaving ground scent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that tree's 
you can get a little, maybe get a little higher, you know, mm-hmm. or maybe get a little bit lower so you get better shot angles, you mm-hmm. know, and you can move around a little bit because those some of those were running all over the place, a little butt buck. So it's like yeah. they can come in from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they clearly have some trails that are headed to the water where they're going yeah. to get a drink and you can kind of see where those are at and, and stuff like that. So um, I'll change that setup a little bit this year based on going in and looking yeah. at it today, you know, talking to you about some of the, the potential tree setups but it is slick man because i literally paddle right in and yeah. i'm right and i'm right there you know and that is yeah, those spots are money too you paddle right in deer come and those spots sit all up close five yard shots oh yeah and 90 percent of the time if you do your setup just right you can hunt that tree all you know, season long 20 man. times yeah. and yeah. never get busted the wind everything's right yeah you know? well the nice thing is too being right there near water you know, what I found a couple of times I did hunt it, man, you know, is that my thermal almost any time of day, unless there's a, I, I have had a stiff wind coming off the water that screwed, yeah. that screwed yeah. me. But if I have calm winds, even if the calm wind is coming off the water, yeah. typically like the prevailing, my thermal just sucks right yeah. back over that, over that water. Yeah. And it base and if nothing else, it keeps it tight to the, yes. tight to the shoreline, you know, yeah. or tight to the, you know, to the water's edge. And you got, you know, fishermen. Oh, other, yeah. you know, kayakers and yeah. stuff. So water, you know, scent coming off water might not be a total, you know, deterrent of a deer because it's like, yeah, it's water. You know, it's, yeah, well, how, it's like how, a hiking trail mostly. <laughs> right. Well, not only that, but deer aren't afraid of fish killing them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> <"Duh."> <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like, what are they, what are they afraid of the water for? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the water to them probably feels pretty safe along yeah. the water's edge. Cause and that's they the bet way. along. I mean, it gives them everything they need, you know? Yeah. They always bet along the edges. Yeah. So, and we saw that today on the yeah. one camera. The one mm-hmm. doe just came in and laid right yeah. down, like you know, for no. no I'm tired of walking. I'm just gonna take a nap. Yeah, right here. So then there was one other piece, you know, to kind of continue the scouting. So we got done with our scouting session. You know, we went over there, pulled a camera, looked at. It, it wasn't really anything, anything on it necessarily. Um, you know, to to speak of, it was more just kind of cleaning up that camera and wanted to show Greg that that particular setup. Find the camera he got stolen. No, that one didn't get stolen at least. But yeah. oh, no, then we went. Yeah, yeah. Then that one camera did get stolen, which still pisses me off. But anyway, um, we won't <laughs> I had talk. To, sorry, I had to just, yeah, we won't just talk turn about. The knife. Yeah, we won't talk about that any, anymore. We'll talk about you getting lost in your canoe, yeah. canoeing in circles <laughs> some more. So then there's this other piece that I was showing Greg, um, and we were just kind of looking at the map when we got back here because actually I was showing him some pictures of some deer that were around some of these areas, and there's one that there's a a tank. It was actually a place I got a camera stolen yeah. also, which mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. got stolen in October, but I had two camera setups. I had one in a kind of a scrape area that I had look, had had an encounter with a deer the year prior and got dark deer. I was getting out of my tree. It was dark. And then I got stuck. Got on dark my, deer. Got dark deer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, good buck, you know? And then, so this year I was like, you know what? I need to set a camera on that scrape when it opens. And then I need to set a camera further back in the timber because I think I know how they're running. And there's like this slough that runs back off this area that I set up and set a set of camera up back there. Tank of a deer on it. I I was, yeah. And I was gone. Like I didn't even hunt that area back in there this year. I just came back when I got back from Missouri and like went and pulled the camera before gun season. So it didn't get stolen. Um, and had a hammer deer on it and he's kind of walking, walking parallel. And so we started looking at the map, kind of trying to figure out where he might be coming from. And so I don't know, man, let's, let's talk about this setup really. I mean, it's, it's, it's in some swampy stuff. It's near a private line, right? right? It's like almost like this swampy kind of, you know, it's dear love. Yes. Yeah, in uh, high pressure areas. And it's just, and that's that swamp too. Like you said, it's, it's almost not knee high rubber boots. It's almost, hip waiter type material it's almost it well i'll tell you what it is it's like wtf because you could be walking along and be like you know up to like mid shin yeah and then you hit a spot and you're and like, like all my balls yeah exactly you know <laughs> that's what that that's what that is tons of ducks in here like i've hunted like close to there and even when i was scouting like i've seen you know ducks hanging yeah. out in there and stuff like that um but there was one thing you noticed right away when i started looking at the t- uh, topo and it's the reason why I put a camera here was that when you look at it, there's clearly like there's a stream that runs through yeah. here, right? And there's this one piece of high ground yeah. across the swamp on the private. And that was kind of exactly why I put that camera there because I was like, there's a little opening into yeah. this slough. And if I were a buck of any maturity and I wanted to get away from pressure, I would run over here and I would bet on that piece of high yeah. ground. And I would use this little travel corridor along this slough where it's all nasty. 
and there aren't any tree stands, there aren't any people. Yeah, because all the the looks like there's crops to the right, mm -hmm. to the east. So that's where the food is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, odds are where he's most likely going to be going, even with oaks are dropping. You know. Yeah, exactly. So. We were kind of checking this out. Um, there's a couple pockets of uh, lone oaks that we want to that I'll end up checking out along this along this piece too, because there's a the southern piece of it I've not spent much time in, so that's an area I need to kind of kind of explore. But that was kind of the extent of our yeah. our scout session today, man. All right, folks, that is a wrap for today's show. I'd like to thank all of you for listening, and if you haven't yet, please head over to iTunes and leave us a five star rating. And hell, while you're at it, head over to YouTube and give us a sub there, too. I'd be super appreciative if you'd be able to do those two things for me. And before I shut this thing down, I need to give a big shout out to our partners who continue to help us make this podcast possible. Tethered, Exodus Outdoor Gear, Skull Brew Coffee Company, and Maven Optics. And until next time, we'll see y'all.